Morning everyone, it's Ian at DIY Home and Gardening and uh, for today's video I thought I'd show you how to propagate this Osteosperma and Stardust Right, let me uh, flick the camera around and show you what we're doing Right, so this is the plant in question, Osteospermum Stardust uh, As you can see it's uh, an absolute mass of flower um, we're towards the end of May uh, it's been flowering for a couple of months already and you can see just how much bud is still to come especially if I actually deadhead it then uh, they carry on for absolutely ages um, this uh, particular variety is a hardy perennial uh, if you go in far up north then it may be um, a little less hardy but my uh, mother-in-law uh, I gave some of some of this to her and they live in Northumberland and it's quite happy up there um, yeah so it is a perennial it's uh, an evergreen perennial so it doesn't die back uh, you still see the foliage and yeah it's been flowering since about March um, ordinarily they do exceptionally well in the full sun position uh, which is where I want to propagate some additional stock for to put it out in my front garden you will notice that this area here, although it looks shady at the moment, it's what I call a part shade position because it does get uh, full sun from about um, half past one in the afternoon. It really does get baked here. Right, so first things first, we're going to look to find a section to propagate from. Um, I did spy a section this morning. So we can have a look down here. Well, actually, if I show you this bit, so you will notice here, as the plant has got older, it develops these little knolled sections, which do end up becoming root down here. So part of the trick, you can either look for a section there, which we can use, um, or try your hand at something else. So with that in mind, I will snip this piece off. Um, if I cut it back to there, and then we'll use this piece for our propagation material. Let's uh, let's go and have a look and see how we do cuttings. Okay, right. So we've got our propagation material. Uh, you'll notice on some of this that we've actually got a section that's already got a root to it. Well, two sections. There is an element that's got the nodules uh, and then we've got some healthy shoots. So we'll start off with the easy bit. Make the snip there. This bit here has already got a root to it. You'll notice it's got a flower stem. It seems like a, you're being cruel but you're not because you want all the growth to go into the all the goodness I should say to go into the root. So Let's take off the flower there. Let's get rid of that. This section still has the flower bud in it. And again, we don't want the goodness to go into the flower bud, so we get rid of that. That there is a pretty good section to plant. We'll strip off the lower leaves so that they don't uh, start decomposing in the compost. Uh, I just use the rooting compound um, top as a bit of a dibber. Make a bit of a hole in there, cut in, pop it in, like so. Slightly firm around, and that's oh, that's good to go. We'll leave that. That will grow on. That will form wheat, uh, sort of some viable roots in a few weeks, and then we can plant that out. One plant, one pot. That one's done. Uh, we will. Next, use this section. So again, there you can see that it's got these nodules. So those nodules, once they're in the compost, they will quite quickly form root. We've got remains of a damaged stem, so we'll remove that. Once again, flower bud, remove the flower bud. Get rid of that. Remove your lower leaves and we will remove this for the time being because we don't want that. Sounds like there's uh, police and ambulance or something going past, so ignore the sound. Uh, take off these lower leaves there. 
one more bud there to remove. So that's what we're finished with. And again, just use that, make your hole, pop it in, plant it so the compost is up to the base of the, the fresh shoots. That way you're going to get good uh, root formation and anchoring. Um, I'll show you this on. So you follow essentially the same rules all the time. It's for any cutting, so you're removing any of your flowering stems. Like this, we can see that's got a root, so that's nice and easy. Take the top out, get rid of that. Any of the older leaves will remove. Gives us our finishing cutting. Well, it's not really a cutting, it's more a plantlet. Pop that in. Right, so, normal cuttings. So we've got all this plant material now, left over, essentially. Um, this is quite a good stem. Uh, generally speaking, they say don't take from a flowering stem, but Osteospermum roots pretty easily, so it's not a bad one to use. So we start off, remove the flower head, or flower. We cut it to there, which leaves us a stem that's probably about four inches in length, which is a little bit long. Uh, you can see it's got a slight curve to it, so we want something really that's gonna be relatively straight. Cut it just below a leaf joint. You can see how the leaf is still just hanging on. And then pull that off and the next couple. By taking it off down to the lowest, just below the leaf joint, that is where there's the biggest concentration of um, rooting hormones so that's why we do that to aid we use hormone rooting powder or you can use a rooting gel dip it in give it a swirl so you can see it's just stuck to the base there um, that will encourage roots to develop again use your top or dibber make a hole you can put just one in if you'd like or what I tend to do, just dip it again, but uh, multiple cuttings or multi-strike um, and that way you end up with a, a better pot, pot full to begin with. So again we do exactly the same where we got the root, take out the curve, strip your lower leaves, dip. And so these, these cuttings will take two to three weeks to root through. Um, you want a stem that's fairly rigid at this stage of the season, so it's, uh, it will root quite readily. And then once, I, once I've done this, I always uh, put my cuttings in a bit of a shady position or shaded position. Uh, that way they're not going to get um, too much moisture evaporation and you'll find that success rate is much better. And here we are, as if by magic, we have a plant that is already growing. Um, to be honest, this is what in, well, it inspired me, I suppose, to do the video, is that uh, I did a load of cuttings of the osteospermum um, at the start of the month, so three weeks ago. Uh, just to start planting out around the garden for a bit of extra colour because uh, you know who doesn't like the look of that um, and so, yeah I just thought actually what well, you know whilst I'm doing this I should have been doing a film on it so uh, yeah did the did the first segment just to show you how easy it is um, and obviously this is the result of uh, something three weeks later you will notice obviously it's got no flower bud on it at all or flowers uh, which is um, unusual for where we are in the season the reason being is that on any of the buds that form um, you can see there I've been taking taking the flowers and the buds out as I want all the goodness to go into this root and uh, let's, so oh yeah so I have watered these this morning so you can see there's a bit of root formation there 
try and get it out if I can. A bit harder one-handed. There we are. So we've got decent root formation there. So that's, uh, well, let's say, ready to plant out and um, go along with the rest of them that uh, I was putting out the other day. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put those out the front and fill in the gaps of the border. So that was my video on how to propagate your own osteospermum. Um, nice and easy to do, or pretty easy to do. Good way to bulk up your numbers. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you found it of interest. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing or uh, send me a, a message on any uh, garden related um, questions, products and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good weekend. Bye.